It's time for the Chips and Salsa Show. The only show about Latinos for Latinos. And did we mention Latinos? It's the Latissima. Latinos come in all flavors, shapes, and sizes. You don't have to be Latino to enjoy Chips and Salsa. Super low, Chips and Salsa. What is up, everybody? Zeke Rodriguez here with the Chips and Salsa Show, New Mexico, along with... I'm Alice Lara. Hola, guacón. Happy 2024, guys. Thank you so much for joining us here in this mid-January. Beautiful day. It's beautiful days out here these past few days. And what a time it is to be alive. It's every day gets crazier. we got some amazingly crazy news coming up here. Federal, we're going to do federal first, and then we're going to jump into some local stuff. But for now, we wanted to jump right into the border disorder, the illegal immigration crisis. Alice, what are you thinking here? Man, border disorder. Uh... We live here in New Mexico, one of the border states. And just before the show, I was I was talking to Zeke because you have some updates on Governor Abbott. I know they're I do. they're going after him, but just kind of New Mexico centric, real quick. You and I have observed we got to have illegal people coming up through our border, mm-hmm. but I don't believe they stay here. I think they keep going to other places. The economy's better. You know, we don't have the greatest economy here in the world, uh, but it's. It's starting to affect us, and I think people are finally starting to pay attention because we're getting the national stories about this. And, you know, before, I think people up north, the northern part of the United States, well, well, big deal, you know, that's just kind of a problem down there. It'll resolve itself. But now that they're being impacted, hmm, all of a sudden they're paying attention. You you had an update about Governor Abbott, right? Yeah, Governor Abbott, but quickly to kind of uh, piggyback on what you're saying, I think now I remember hearing that they purposely don't let people stay in the southern states because we'll we'll be able to notice some more especially here in new mexico there's like two million people here in general and i just heard from somebody that we've only had like an 800 percent increase in this state because i don't who knows why either they're not counting the immigrants or this place sucks that bad could be both but from what i understand they're actually shipping most of the illegals up to the northern states so we don't really notice when they're around here and then or is that to uh, get them registered to vote well, yeah, there was this uh, talk of the most Republican district in New York getting flooded with these uh, hardcore illegal immigrants that, you know, they, they vote and their kids vote right away. And that opens up, you know, more uh, legislative districts, more congressmen, and they get representation now, which is illegal. They're not, um, you know, they're not naturalized uh, legal citizens. So, yeah, just to tie in on that real quick, I think, you know, if, if we did have a lot of illegal immigrants here, we would notice. And I have noticed some people in this area that aren't necessarily from Mexico either. Like, you know, right. Mexican Spanish, <laughs> we know what they look like. These dudes are from like down in the South, like Nicaragua and stuff. But yeah, so I think keep our eyes out uh, for, for that in the future. But for now they're shipping them up North. That's for sure. Well, and we talked about this with uh, Henry, the uh, Republican chairman of Doniana County. And so you come here, you can get a driver's license. That's even so if you crazy. are an illegal alien. And you're supposed to be a different temptation, you know, something stamped on your license to say that. But, hey, what's to keep me? I come here illegally. I get a driver's license from New Mexico. I go somewhere else to another state. And the other state, they may not know, you know, okay, well, New Mexico, meh. And then they just take that as valid documentation. I mean, where is the security controls here? Are there any? And I know it's pretty weird for you guys. A couple of darkies talking about, you know, hating on illegal immigrants. It's pretty freaking <laughs> what weird. What are we? Some darkies. <laughs> Uh, like Vivek Ramaswamy. Uh, <laughs> but the reality is we don't have the money to support these people. You know, it's like we just don't. We're broke as a country. We shipped all of our manufacturing jobs overseas. We don't mine our own resources. Southern New Mexico alone has some of the most oil on planet Earth, yet we're the most, like, brokest state in the country. So it's like, hey, why don't we focus on taking care of our own people first, our own veterans first, instead of these illegal immigrants who aren't even the best, by the way. I know naturalized citizens. They're badass people. They're hard workers. They're small business owners. That's not who's coming over the border right now. So that's a little bit of a segue to go over with Governor Abbott. Now, he's just came out on Friday and said that he's going to start employing retired state police, retired Border Patrol, uh, former military veterans to start rounding up the illegal immigrants and shipping them back, uh, exporting them, deporting them. And it's going to take about four to five years. But these are going to be hefty salary paid jobs. It's a very dangerous job. And it's the only way that he can see the state of Texas being saved because that's going to be paying for these uh, these you know former military former law enforcement officers to do this is still going to be less money than paying each illegal immigrant because they I think they spend about a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year per person okay so it's still cheaper to fly them back and to hire people to take them back than to pay them and Governor Abbott's definitely under fire for that but that's just news that just came out you guys might have heard about that I love that I mean you know 
He gets criticized, of course, from the left and people that don't like that. Oh, you're just a racist and you're so hateful and you're all that. But he's trying to do something about it. And imagine if all the states did that. I mean, we could never expect that from our own governor. No, no. She would never even think about doing that. Just the threat of, of having an action like that and how powerful that could be. And, you know, it's, it's too bad. But our states, every state has a right to protect its border. And, and that's just not obligation. happening at the federal level. It's a legal obligation. That's constitutional. And just to give you guys contrast, so you got Governor Abbott dispatching the National Guard, hiring retired freaking Border Patrol and state, state cops to come help deport these people. Meanwhile, our governor, when we have some of the most dangerous people in the world from all over the world coming over our border here in New Mexico, is trying to take our guns away at the same time. I mean, look at the mm -hmm. difference in philosophies and, and uh, executions of, of approaches with the governors right next door to each other. That's how polarized our country is right now, guys. But that's all right. That's why we're here talking to you guys. We're sharing this news so you guys can wake up. We can all wake up together and be on the same page so we can make a difference and call out our governor for being absolutely horrendous with their horrendous policies. And I tell you what, on that border disorder stuff, every day, if you can think about it, whatever social media that you might be on, uh, try to post, I try to, and I'm not, I'm not as good as I should be about it. Try to post a story about it. There's an update every day if you know where to look. A really good place too is, remember our friend that we interviewed, Tim Foley, who's mm -hmm. in charge of, he's a founder of um, Arizona Border Recon. Mm -hmm. And he's right there at the Arizona border, right there close to Sierra Vista and all that stuff. He knows exactly what's going on. He's been doing it for years. You can even just go to his Facebook site if you wanted to. Go to his website, it's even better. But keep people updated because people kind of they know there's a problem but when you start hearing specific stories like these and what's happening it, it really makes an impact and somebody a long time ago i was still living in arizona and they said um it's all relative until it's your relative and this was because they were talking to a group that would track all the illegal crimes and murders that happen because you know a lot of people want to paint them all as saints and i'm sorry yes i'm sure good I hope a good majority of them are good people and they really have wonderful intentions. I want to believe that. But it still doesn't matter because you have to do things legally and properly because we are still a nation, a nation of United States citizens and we want to remain so. Yeah, yeah, a couple things on that. Shout out to Mr. Tim Foley with Arizona Border Recon. I absolutely love that guy. He's been on the border sticking out all the trafficking and all the illegals that are coming over. Man, if I was president in a crazy world, if I was president, I'd build that guy a huge freaking copper statue on the border. Because um, he deserves it. He's just an amazing human being. And then and the, I love that you chose copper. You know, that's Arizona. Arizona. <laughs> really? Thank I you. Did, I didn't really know that. Very Arizona. And then the other thing is just that basically we don't have the money for these people, guys. We, we don't. We don't. <laughs> we just don't. We don't have guys. money for ourselves. Yeah. And, and so unless we address this issue, we're going to be in an economic downfall just like they are. So these illegal immigrants, it's not like they're coming over here from terrorism or anything. It's from economic freaking downturn. It's because of the lockdowns. The lockdowns shut down the third world. The third world serves the first world. So when you shut down the entire world, the third world has no one to serve. There's no more jobs. They're fleeing fallen, broken economies to come up here for jobs. They have nothing else to do. So I feel bad for these people. I'm not trying to like talk about them like they're horrible people. They don't, they don't deserve prosperity. They, they kind of don't because they got to be naturalized American citizens. But what are we supposed to do? What are we supposed to do? We got to take care of our own first. But at the end of the day, Mr. Fauci and his policies were the ones that wrecked the third world's economies, and that's why they're coming up here. I don't think people understand that. I love your point, and this is how I like to think about it, too. When you fly in an airplane and they're giving you instructions, one of the things they tell you is if you're traveling with a child, what are you supposed to do? You put, and something happens, you put your mask on first, which seems like, oh, it's my kid, I want to take care of him. Mm -hmm. You need to make yourself equipped and in a good enough realm to take care of your child properly. And that's kind of like how I envision the border in our nation. Yes, we want to help people. We've, ne we've always been a very, very a generous country. But we have to keep ourselves strong so we can remain a strong force to help those that need help and, and keep, make them successful and our own people too. Yes, yes, that's very well put. It's, it's super counterproductive. It's super counterintuitive to the human condition for just basic survival to not take care of ourselves first to survive. And, and, and then until you, everyone understands that, they basically want to get rid of that border, bring in all of these third world refugees essentially, and make a permanent underclass that are ruled by the many, by the, like a few handful of billionaires. That's what they want. That's the, that's the, that's the agenda here, guys. And as we get closer into the next election cycle, you're going to see it more and more clear. And I'm mentioning it because 
Unless we understand what's going on, we ain't going to be able to fix nothing. You know, Zeke, maybe we should think about uh, every week we have a little update on the border. We bring Tim Foley in for a few minutes or somebody from our own border. In fact, um, uh, who's it? Rebecca Dow? Is yeah. Who we talked to? Yeah. Who's right there? Part of her district yeah. is right there in and Denver, Jennifer right? Jones as well. Jennifer, Jennifer Jones. Jones. Yeah. That's who I'm thinking yeah. of. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, I still I don't know New Mexico as good as Arizona. Ah, close uh, enough. But just to bring people up to date, because every day, this is our election year, and this is, I think, one of our big, major problems that we have to address. Well, let's think about it logically. Why else would they let these people come in here? And, they, and they, I just saw an article, too, that they're, they're using veteran resources, medical resources, to service illegal immigrants over veterans right now. And that's happening all over the country. So why would we take care of these people who haven't been vetted, who aren't naturalized American citizens, over our own people? Like, that's because the people who own our country don't, they, the people who run our country don't have our best interests at heart. These are the global bankers. These are the big, massive conglomerates that have had agendas that don't have us, we the people in mind. They don't, they don't care about us. We have to take care of ourselves. Who founded and freed the human spirit in the constitution? We the people. It wasn't some freaking government entity. It wasn't the border patrol. It wasn't the cops. It was we the people. And they know that and that's why we're under attack. I couldn't agree with you more, unfortunately. <laughs> and even the example recently too, uh, was it in Colorado? where the kids, they were telling, okay, kids uh, in the public schools, you guys got to stay home and kind of do a COVID thing, you know, school from your home. But meanwhile, the, the kids of the illegal aliens, they got to go to the schools. Now, someone did post, I posted that story on my Facebook page, and then someone commented that they weren't telling the whole story. It's because the buildings that they were in were cold, so they were just finding them shelter. And I haven't had an opportunity to check that out. But either way, what that is, is there are more resources taken and you know what about what about our vets? What about our homeless population? What about you know people that are Americans already? We're getting thrown on the bus right now with the inflation and stuff, guys. I mean, I I'm not one to complain too much, but you go to the grocery store, it's like 15 bucks for a case of water. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, gas is doing okay now because it's probably an election cycle, but I I've never have experienced such an expensive trip to the grocery store in my life. I mean, it's crazy. It's just not sustainable. We're gonna be just like these third world countries here real soon if we don't start waking up and figure things out. Let's jump into some Trump stuff in the Iowa caucus. What do you think about that? Yeah, Alice? and just on your last point on gas, yeah. yeah, it is going down, but it's still not like when Trump was in office. Was it dollar ten, dollar fifteen when Trump was in? It was. Like yeah, I don't know. I don't think I don't know if it was that cheap, but I remember right here moving it was. here, and we were paying when we moved here, May twenty twenty two. Gas in Phoenix was like five bucks. It was cheaper here. It was four bucks. So we have gone down, but we're still, it's, it's still too high. Yeah, still not even close. You're right. Okay, so um, Iowa caucus. Uh, I was trying to kind of find some news about that. Um, I think Trump's still going to, you know, be strong. He's going to be very, very strong in the Iowa caucus. What I remember someone was telling me months ago is they were, this is a, a big DeSantis person, okay? And I was saying, well, you know, my, my uh, argument with them was, Okay, DeSantis is there, but he still can't really gain a lot of traction. And now at this point, at the Iowa caucus, pretty much Nikki Haley is in second place, right? And mm -hmm. I think DeSantis is right there. So, I mean, what the heck is going to go on there? I mean, Trump is trumping, I hate to use the word, but it's a good word. He's trumping it all. Vivek is still there. He's making a showing, but he still hasn't gained that much momentum. Um, predictions? I don't know, it's, and it's really cold up there. I don't know how much that affects them. They're used to the cold weather, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, it's like not, zero like, degrees over there right now. Yeah, like it was one. I was watching the newscaster. He was saying it's one degree. He was outside <laughs> one degree. Wow, me, I'm sixty degrees and I'm freezing. So, yeah, I mean, some good news, guys, is Yuval Harari. If you guys know who that is, shout out to you. But basically, the mouth talking piece of the World Economic Forum has just said that Trump is poised to win hands down the election. I mean, and that's what's, it's so, I was laughing because how the hell did DeSantis get behind Nikki Haley in the race? Like, he screwed up that bad. Because Nikki Haley is terrible. I'm sorry, guys. I cannot get behind well, her whatsoever. Okay, so do you think maybe it's, it's kind of a, a personality thing? You know, you and I have been doing politics long enough that personalities, you know, I know you're supposed to do the issues. But if, if you have someone with a strong personality and you like them, you're more apt to pay attention to them. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not a Nikki person. I'm not, you know, if, if I had, if it was only Nikki and DeSantis, I'd do DeSantis. Yeah. I shouldn't say I do DeSantis. That doesn't sound. <laughs> Are you both <laughs> <on> DeSantis? <laughs> um, so, but, and Vivek, 
Vivek just keeps. I love that guy. Keep saying stuff and saying stuff. No matter what you think about him, you have to pay attention to him. And he's everywhere, man. He pops up everywhere. Let's be fair about everybody, though. Like, for me, what got me with DeSantis is that there was, like, confirmed, you know, confirmed that he eats with his hands. You know? that That's a big turnoff for me. And then... <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Wait, what Wait, what was he eating with his hands? He was, was eating he... yogurt and, and, like, yogurt. dessert. Yeah, and, and cake just with it straight with his hand. Just shoveling it in there, you know? And, and then he wears heels. He wears like three inch heels. He's not like as I've tall. I've heard about that. He's not, he's not as tall as he projects himself to be, which those are two very weird things for me. And that's why I was like, I'm done with this. Wait a minute. So it, um, has, has uh, Trump made fun of that? I haven't heard him make fun of that. Maybe he has. has huh? and I, I think he has, but I mean, that, that's kind of messed up. I mean, look, if you got to rock heels, it is what it is. The Wear thing, some cowboy boots, right? Patrick Bet David had called him out on his podcast, and, and, he, and he lied about it on his podcast. So, and then with. You, uh, Ramaswamy, you know, the guy's got kind of a sketchy past, right? I mean, what do, you, what do you know about that? Well, it's interesting you say that. I was just listening to, um, I think you've heard him before too, the Prather Point. Yes, yes. So Jeff Prather, for those of you who have been following me for a very long time, uh, hailed from Arizona. He now he doesn't live in Arizona anymore, but he is a former whistleblower for the Fast and Furious. Mm -hmm. but he has super good intel. He has a podcast, the Prather Point, and I hope we don't get, you know, thrown off a YouTube for mentioning his name because he's been kicked off. Which to me, if you've been kicked off YouTube, which our show has been, that is a digital badge of honor. So never be afraid of that. But getting back to Vivek. So he had a guest on, I think it's his January 11th show. And if you want to go and listen to a lot of background on Vivek, please go listen to that show. There's a lot to list there. Now, um, you know, there's like a Soros connection. You guys have talked. Big, he was talked like a, about a big pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical swin swindler. You know, he Chinese, was, yeah. China. I didn't hear about so the China thing. What's up with the China? Something thing? to do also with the pharmaceutical thing yeah. too. You gotta have and to because it's all in China now. So it's kind of whatever. He's only is he forty yet? He's I, not even forty, I right? I still now he's he's my age. He's thirty eight. I I still like the guy. Again, my only complaint is that he's a little too dark. That's my main issue. So if you were just a little bit lighter, like he maybe can your skin, skin tone? Like Sammy Sosa. Can he you make him your skin, skin tone? Be all right. I'm a little too dark, too. You're a little too dark. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I love, I love Vivek. I don't care about his skin color. I don't care that he's Hindi, either. I, I just think the guy's super articulate, super eloquent, and he says, he says things that are detrimental to the people that are trying to take over this country and this world. You don't, you don't talk like that unless you mean it, all right? So... Regardless of his sketchy past, I'm open-minded. I'm open-minded because if you look at the past of the people who are running the show right now, like, who cares? Look at Biden's freaking son. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, half these Democrats out here are ruthless well, and rough. And, and even, um, you know, look at Trump. They're always trying to get Trump on so many things. He was in business. That's a different world than politics and different things. So you have to—I just—he says so many strong, powerful things, and he's unafraid to say them. And the value of just those things being said, I think, goes a lot for our party and for our country, don't you? Like, yeah. I think you're kind of saying that. The thing way. about Trump, he's pretty much like a modern-day saint. The guy doesn't drink. He's been a public figure yeah, since doesn't... the 80s. Since the freaking... He's been a public figure longer than I've been alive, dude. And he, they haven't found nothing. The most that people have on him is that his tweets are, are mean or that his, his, uh, his delivery is rough. That's the most they got on Trump and you know, after 30-plus years. And that's a lot of the argument. A lot of people who are their big DeSantis fans, and that's fine. Support who you want to. You think it's the best candidate. But my thing is, okay, Trump's already been through all this. He's been through all this um, impeachment. Uh, the courts are against him. Uh, people have the Trump deranged syndrome, all of that stuff. And it's like whatever you keep throwing at him, he just keeps getting stronger. So put DeSantis in there. Do they think that no one's going to go after DeSantis and not attack him he on anything? He's with his hands for crying out loud. You know? What's, I mean, just on that alone, <laughs> they'll take him out. But I'm just saying, we'd have to go through a whole cycle of that again. So that's why, you know, in my, in my view, Trump is stronger already. He's already been through all that. I mean, what more can they throw at him? Just when you think they're done, they find something else. And it just makes him fight back stronger yeah, they it's make amazing. it up if i was them i'd be hammering more on the pussy grabbing stuff you know that that, that was pretty interesting stuff and i think I, I hear a lot about complaints about that from women now these days uh but it's natural that's a natural thing for men to do right <laughs> wait a minute for a billionaires to, to, to grab well it's and, locker room and what, talk. what did he yes yeah, locker room talk what do you say that's what he talked about you can and you know what i'm sorry okay i'm, I'm gonna represent the females here okay <laughs> But there are some females, and they probably, you know, didn't mind it. Will, they didn't mind do it. Whatever. They didn't mind it. 
And and I'm not saying that they're all like that. No, I mean I certainly wouldn't. wouldn't oh, want you, to you know why they stopped Paramount? I just remembered is because all he anytime they'd mention it, he'd be like, Bill Clinton has been accused and been found guilty or basically settled with hardcore rape cases and allegations. So you can blame me for locker room talk all day. This man, Bill Clinton, has been abusive to women than any politician in history. So they they started to zip their lips real quick about that that pussy and, grabbing stuff. And he started it. I mean, really, we have a president and a dress that we talked about. I mean, I still I remember. A long time. I still remember being in the studio when they were questioning him, and I'm I'm there with our host. I think it was Bob Mohan. Gosh dang it, I can't remember if it was Bob Mohan, KFYI, Phoenix, Arizona, or if it wasn't him, it was Barry Young. And we're looking up at the screen, and I wish I could do a Clinton impression. I did not have sex with that woman. I still remember he had the guts to get up there and say to the American people. Yeah, that was ballsy. I mean, Slick Willie was super charismatic. He is. I mean, that who who does that? He bold faced lied. And I believed him. I was like probably like what? Oh, did you? I, really? I was like nine, yeah. ten, or something like okay, that. Okay, I can forgive you. And I was like, this guy's awesome. He didn't do it. You know, uh, <laughs> so that's what's going on. Uh, we just broke down the Iowa caucus. Trump's gonna win. Trump's done. If you all, if you guys don't know who Yuval Harari is, you guys gotta look it up. This guy's the biggest deep pocket. Could you spell that? Do Yuval you know spell Harari. That? U V A L H E R A R I. Yuval Harari. So this guy is all about AI taking over and the humans merging with artificial intelligence, and the future of the world is with silicon. So he's basically like spearheading the depopulation agenda. And if he comes out and says that Trump's, Trump's going to win and destroy the, the New World Order uh, uh, initiative and agenda, that says a lot. That means they're probably going to be coming after Trump even harder now. And they are. And they are. They will. You can guarantee that. Oh, yeah. They are relentless and will never quit. No. For sure. No. You know, uh, so that's it, guys. That's our presidential candidates are pretty abysmal with the exception of Trump and Vivek. I mean, I, I love Vivek. I just don't think he has a chance to win. I think he's a good spare tire in case something happens to Trump. I mean, typically throughout history, I was talking about this earlier on, on my personal show, on Zico Rodriguez show. I do live every Monday at 7 30, on Instagram and Facebook. But basically, there's a story in the 40 Laws of Power um, in the Han Dynasty. Every two, from 222 AD to 900 AD, every two years, the Chinese emperor would be assassinated by a general. The general would take over and be the emperor, and then another two years later, another general would assassinate that. It was like that for centuries. Okay, so it's not hard to just think that they're gonna try and poison this dude or, or do something to Trump to get rid of him. So for me, Vivek is a great spare tire in case that happens, because I trust his judgment. I think he's better than, than DeSantis in a lot of ways, way better than Nikki Haley. So that's how I look at Vivek. He's a good spare tire. Do I think he can win? Hell no, I don't think he's even good. Trump has the most amazing brand name awareness you could, on planet Earth's history. Trump has more of a lead, pre-primary convention than George freaking Washington, dude. Come on. <laughs> I think that's a, a really interesting term to use, spare tire. Uh, Trump gets elected, where would you put Vivek? I like Tucker Carlson as vice president better than Vivek, but if I was, if I was I'd probably put Vivek, I'd, I want him in charge of the Pentagon to start wiping out all the three-letter acronym agencies, like Vivek says he wants to do, and I'd say let him do it. But I think it's Secretary of State handles all that. So I'd put him in a secretary of state, somewhere where he can take his take control of the Pentagon and get rid of those freaking three-letter agencies because they're they're the ones that are in charge that are destroying this country um, from from within. That's good, and, and he uh, has no qualms talking about that. You know, mm -mm. on his first day, get rid of the Department of Education, things like that. They're just such a waste, and the money that goes there. I, I think that would waste. be a good. Yeah. So that's what I would do. I would just let him clean house. Me. Just let him do it. Good place Knock for yourself him. out, buddy. Absolutely. Um, I was thinking, oh, one more thing before we leave the national stuff. So, I, uh, President Trump said he already knows who his vice president pick is going uh -oh. to be. But he hasn't said. He just, you know how he is. It's going to be Tucker. He's a good teaser. It's going to be Tucker. Teaser. I've already, so I'm not going to say who it is. He told the, the people, like, oh, have me on another show so we can talk about that or something like that. You think it's going to be Tucker? It's got to be. Tucker's just so damn popular. I mean, the guy is insane. He's just yeah. like, he's number one podcast in the world. He's beating Joe Rogan now. Oh, is he beating Joe he's Rogan? By a lot. Wow. By a lot. That I mean, was the best thing that could happen to him, then fire his... Oh, yeah, best thing. Yeah, the worst thing they could have done. Mm -hmm. Just helped everybody. So it's, it's uh, from my understanding, it's uh, number one podcaster is uh, uh, Tucker Carlson. Number two is Joe Rogan. And number three is Alex Jones. Those are the three most popular voices on planet Earth right now. Okay, so here's my question. I'll ask it as a, a former producer of talk radio. Do you think Tucker would have more... I don't like to use the word power or strength maybe to reach the people 
keeping on as he is in his role as a podcaster and newscaster than if he became vice president. Because the vice presidents, sometimes it kind of gets stuck behind. That's a good it's, question, but just given the trend of how powerful the vice presidents have been, I think it's worth the sacrifice, and that may be why he doesn't select Tucker Carlson because of that whole that whole thing is that he's just too more, he's too powerful being on X. But like I said, we got the president we have now because he was a vice president for eight years. You know what I mean, it's too risky to put someone in there that isn't like legit hardcore badass like Tucker Carlson. You know, I mean Vivek is up there, but Vivek's nothing compared to Tucker Carlson's name brand, where it's like nothing. Well, I kind of, I'm, I'm thinking like into the future. So you keep Tucker Carlson in his role. He kind of does like a Rush Limbaugh. We really haven't had the closest person that I think, uh, that I think they should have replaced Rush Limbaugh's slot with is uh, Bongino. Dan Bongino is really Bongino's good. Awesome. He has a lot of great connections. He's a super good communicator. He's a, you know, a, a normal guy. People like him. He's a guy you go out and have a beer with and everything. And so I just, there's a lot of power in communication. So whatever happens, you know, Trump gets elected, whoever becomes a vice president, I want us to have strong power, just like our show is powerful now here. You know, and again, I like to use the word strength more than power because an informed public, you can't really do anything unless you have some good information so you can make some good judgments. Don't you think that that can yeah, be more helpful and useful in some ways? You know, honestly, the way you put things, it makes me kind of just see the future as being completely different as we experience it It will now. be. Because the people who control this country will lose their control once Trump and, say, Tucker Carlson gets in. So our means of communication and the way that we acquire news is going to be much, much different than we could even probably fathom right now. So say Tucker does get in there, I think it's going to be such a different world by the time we get out of this cycle, guys, by the time we get through this little portal we're about to go through. That him as him as a vice president is going to be he's going to be freaking broadcasting from the White House. Well, I was you just going to say, so you could see him, and he might have a dual role, and mm -hmm. it could change. Yeah. So why yeah. not? We've never had it before. I mean, we got to start thinking outside the box. I days. think that's a really good point, Z. I think it really is a good point. You know, to think of it. Even, that way. even if they're just got him a camera on him while he's in freaking Air Force One, or you know what I mean, or in the limo. Just, I, I think, and that, was it, was it Roosevelt that did that? That did the state of address? He did the fireside chats. Fireside chats. I mean, bring that shit back, man. I mean, I, I love that stuff. I, I think that's what we're trying to do here is just kind of just shoot you guys straight. And I'll be running for office in the future. And, and if I run for office, I'm going to keep shooting straight. Because I think the future of politics is not what we've been experiencing over the past several decades, if not a century, guys. It's not going to be like that anymore. The future of politics is complete, utter transparency. And I'll tell you why. Because the technology, as fast as it's growing, is going to warrant it. It's gonna, it's gonna ensure it. There's no way that we're gonna be having shady politicians and, and just keeping things in the back end. We're gonna have to, everything's being monitored. There's cameras everywhere. So why not own that as a politician who represents the people and still communicate with them at a high, high level and the censorship will be gone. You can throw your podcasts on X and let people know what's going on with your policies. And I can see that. So, you know, you're the president of the United States and then every time you get on Air Force One, Let's, let's pretend Tucker Carlson is the vice president. He's like, hey, we're, we just boarded Air Force One. Here's what we're doing. And here's the latest update in five minutes, whatever. Why not see it that way? And that's why, though, it is very important. We must keep our country free. Because if we don't have the freedom, none of this that we're talking about matters because it won't happen. It'll all be controlled. And that's God. Freedom is based on God, guys. God mm -hmm. is in the Declaration of Independence four times. Without God, without morality, we got no freedoms. We got no civil liberties. So, I mean, that's what they banned Trump off Twitter right away because he was doing that. He was doing True. that. He, he, was, he was going all Too in. much information. It was too much information. It was too powerful, so they banned him, you know, and that, and that crippled his campaign. It really did because he couldn't defend himself. Once you can't defend yourself, that's why freedom of speech is so powerful. Once you can't defend yourself, man, it's, it's, uh, it's game over. They can do with you what they want. And, you know, I just want to remind you, we didn't do this last show, but I think uh, we had started the tradition of closing out the show with a prayer that you do so well. Right. Yeah. So let's try to remember to do that. Okay, sure. Awesome. Wow, we've been doing good. I've been talking and the battalion's been going. And oh, I do want to give wonderful kudos and appreciation to Oregon Mountain Productions. And that's why we're here in these beautiful studios. We're getting very good commentary on. Yeah. Thank you, Joey Esparza and his lovely wife, Haley. Thank you Muchas very much. gracias. Yeah, and they also do everything, the flavors of the desert, and which I love. I'm a big foodie, guys. If you guys follow me, I'm cute. No, really? I love you food. You make me hungry every time I leave. I love food. And what they're doing is they're going around the state, around the local area, and they're interviewing chefs, they're interviewing restaurants, and they're doing bios on them. So if you're a restaurant and you want to get in on this, hit them up. 
I'm going to be supporting them 110%. I think it's a super cool concept. Flavors of the Desert, please give them support. And you can find them at, at the local stores. You can hit us up. We'll uh, you know, get you in touch with the magazine. If, you wanna, if you're a restaurant and you want to jump in, we got your back. We're going to be getting into Albuquerque, helping them uh, get into Albuquerque as well. So thank you guys up here at Oregon Mountain Studios. They're doing big things. Honored to be here with them. Communicating with you guys directly, shooting it to you from the grassroots level, shooting it to you straight so we can all be together in this crazy time to be alive in 2024. It is a very crazy time. So are you ready to switch into New Mexico politics? Oh, I guess. Which, you know, you think you might be watching this and you're from Arizona or another state. You think, know, well, they're going to talk about New Mexico now. <laughs> hey, you know what? I think we are the testing ground. And so please pay attention because you could learn from this crazy state. Absolutely. Um, MLG, affectionately, that's our governor, Michelle Lujan Grisham. Supposed Catholic, right? <laughs> well, she's not. Anyway, so she's got, I, I just saw this, and so I printed it out real quick. Santa Fe, New Mexican says, Governor unveils broad public safety plan. And kudos to Sarah Smith, who uh, she put this on her Facebook page, and she circled um, this new stuff that she wants to do. An increase in the legal age to purchase firearms to 21 from 18. So right now in New Mexico, if you're 18, you can buy a firearm. A 14-day waiting period for background checks to be finalized before the purchase of a firearm. Two weeks. What is it right now? Do you know? I have no idea. I think it's like three or four days. I was going to say it's probably a few days, right? Three-day waiting period? Instant. instant. Oh, it's instant. Instant background oh. check. Well, good for New Mexico. See, that's one thing. New Mexico is blue, but when it comes to gun rights, yeah. even the Democrats. Even most Dems are all about guns around here. They really are. And then it says the governor also plans to push for legislation banning firearms in public parks and playgrounds. Let's okay. never help nobody. Yeah. So That's like advertising gun-free zone. Come on over and kill me and shoot me, right? Yeah. It's just everything she does is so backwards and it's just so antithetical to the human condition. It's like so obvious, guys. Like how, how do people vote for her? I, let's talk about that. How do you I'm get good. to a place where you vote for this woman? You know, like I just, I, I don't get it. And I, it's, she, to me, she's like Biden. It's like I haven't even met anybody that could even speak to something positive that Biden's done for the country. So what, what, what has Michelle Grisham done for this state at all? We're the worst educated, we're the worst economically. I mean, it's just, I can go on and I get, it's abysmal. I get depressed talking about it. It's like that, because I love this place, guys. I love the freaking food here, man. I love the yes. freaking people here. You know, the weather, this place has so much freaking potential. And I, and I, and I've running for office and learning this state, traveling county by county, 33 counties. Shout out to Ben Luna running for US Senate. He had me on a yeah. 33 county tour. Go Ben. And so I got to know the state really well on an intimate level. There's a lot of resources here, guys. We got geothermal energy. We got gold in our, we literally have gold mines in our hills that are unmined. You know, we have we have cobalt, cobalt, that's what they make solar panels for. And Deming, there's a bunch of cobalt there. I didn't know that about Deming. Huge cobalt, cobalt mine there. Really? And we just can't mine it. They don't let us do it. Because you gotta get a mineral rights license to do it, and they don't issue mineral rights license. Same thing with the oil. So we gotta just take control of our own state. I firmly believe that we don't have control or own our own state. Someone else owns and controls this state. How could it be that we just let these resources go to waste, that we don't let these jobs be, be mined for, for our own people? It just doesn't make any sense to me. Well, we have to look up that uh, statistic to see how much New Mexico has grown. I was mentioning before the show, there's just barely over 2 million people here Yeah. in the whole like entire state of New Mexico. It's like nothing. So right next door, Arizona has, I think, 7 million plus. Arizona, okay, it's basically the same size geographically. And then Texas, what? Texas is like number two or three, the largest I have no idea. It's huge, though. In the whole United States? It's huge. But, you, but you're so right. Well, Michelle Lujan Grisham, the thing about her, I've only been here, what, a year and a half, and there's already so many things. It's like executive order, executive... I'm like, it, it doesn't matter. It's like, That's why I say it's kind of like a testing ground. Let's try this and see what happens. How much will the people take? And, and I wasn't here at that time, but do you think it probably all began with the COVID? Well, yeah, she was the worst. We were the last state to unlock things, you know. But New Mexico's been in horrible shape for a long time, though. It was way before Michelle got in there. I mean, even when, when uh, what's her name? Uh, Susanna Martinez? Yeah, Susanna Martinez. You know who I was talking about. <laughs> even when she was in, she didn't really do much either. You know, it's like she wasn't even really running the show either. And then she goes on and cheats on her husband with her security guard. You know, I mean, it's like... Is that is that's what that was the finest final thing, huh? Well, I just it's too bad. The that, morality, the morality. So much you know, potential. I'm big, on, I'm big on morality, and I'm not perfect. You know what I mean? I'm not the I'm not I'm not like a freaking saint or an angel. But if you're going to be in that type of position of power, man, you're under. At the least gun. be smart about it and don't get caught, right? 
Yeah. I mean, That's if you're going to be grabbing pussies, do what you got to do, but at least don't be in office while you're doing it. Gee, should we use that for a little short week? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know. I get it. These people are in super powerful positions. And then really what it is for, uh, for Susanna, it's called the law of propinquity, guys. And I talk about this on my show, but basically just being in close proximity to the other gender, you, you're more inclined to like them or have like intimate romantic feelings towards them. So she might have been going through some stuff with her ex-husband, whatever. Falls in love with her security guard, whatever. But then there's the whole drunken antics of her being like drunk, throwing alcohol bottles. That's what I remember hearing about. Yeah, you know, it's like, so even though she was a Republican and she was in office for eight years, she didn't really do much while she was in there. And then who was that before then? Bill Richardson. That guy was in like boat accidents and like drinking accidents, like constantly. I mean, the guy was on Epstein Island. Oh, we didn't even talk about that. Oh, Epstein. we'll, we'll go into that. We have to circle back. But then, let's just keep going talking. back. There's Governor King, you know, and he sold. The land to Epstein for Zoro Ranch. Zoro Ranch is wow. right next to Governor King's property. Our former governor sold to Epstein his property for Zoro Ranch, and they were chumming buddies. Okay, so that's who's been running our state for all these years now. Susanna's probably the least corrupt of them all. That's not saying much. Well, even um, MLG Michelle Lujan Grisham, her little thing. Remember the intern? Oh no, not intern. Excuse me. It was a staffer who was gay. And he said that she did something inappropriate. She to grabbed him, his dick, right? Okay, and so they settled, and she just continued on. And people still voted Dude, for her. People still that, reelected imagine her. Imagine if I did that, I'd be in freaking oh, jail yeah. right now. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I would never be able to work. I'd have to move states. I'd have to move somewhere where that's accepted. I don't even know where's grabbing dick accepted. California. I'd have to move to California. <laughs> you know. Well, evidently it's accepted here too. I mean, you know. Uh, yeah, they, it's just fine. I didn't vote for her. I had just moved back here. I didn't vote for her. And I know a lot of people who didn't. But it's amazing. It's just a brainwash. You know, everybody's so conditioned. And, it, you know, and this is a welfare state. You know, in, in Texas, you got to be pretty much paraplegic to get welfare over there. You know, around here, it's like, hey, you, some, you want some free money? You want some free stuff? Here you go. And that's just not good for the economy, guys. It's good to, you know, uh, pull ourselves up from our own bootstraps and have jobs and, and be assets to the community. It's not good, and it gives you a certain vibe, and, and people have you know, expectations of entitlement, and that's never healthy, not for good. This, it's not the New Mexico even that you grew up with, you know, in. You are a, a millennial, and I'm a boomer, but it's, it's a whole different world now. And I don't know that we can ever return back to those old days, but at least some self-respect and the, the value of work, and because, if, if you don't have the value of work and family and God, it's going to be tough to keep this nation much less stable. I'm glad you said that because it's basically just the communist mentality, the communist agenda, which is anti-God and pro-victim mentality. So it's like, look, your life sucks. The, the, the rich, powerful people did it to you. So it's the government's job to make sure that you have a fair leg up in society. And that's always led to absolute utter disaster. You know? And I have a theory that post-World War II, uh, Hitler and the Nazis went to Argentina, and I, and I know this is provable, I've studied this, they infiltrated the workers' unions in, the, in the Argentina, and they were able to flip all the workers' unions to go communist because they wanted the government to take over with, with exorbitant uh, uh, unemployment benefits. And that's how communism spread throughout South America, eventually got here to New Mexico, mm, actually started the Indian reservations. If you go to the Indian reservations, they're a train wreck, you know what I mean? And and that's because they have communist you know policies on on their on their lands. Well, they used to be I would call them socialists back in the olden days. But still I think I think you have a really good still point. Still communists, you know. Yeah, so exactly. so they, they tested it out with the reservations first, to my to my understanding. And then now it's New Mexico's a testing ground to me as to how they want the rest of the country to be. They want us all dependent on the government, and they want us all to yield to their power and and to be disempowered. They don't want us to be healthy. They don't want us to be educated. They don't want us to be anything that. So, you know, offers prosperity. They want to take that away from us, and that makes us more controllable. Easily controllable, yeah, yeah. So that's just I don't know. I can't stand MLG. I I don't even like talking about her. Me, I don't. I can't even. <laughs> I just can't stand to look at her picture. Okay, so I'm going to ask you this. So tell our New Mexico audience, and actually the whole country, really, because even though this is New Mexico, the governors having strong Republican conservative governors helps the United States as a whole. So how can we ask our audience? To, to make this happen. If, if you have an election for your governor coming up, I mean, we need to keep our, our governors strong and, of course, the legislatures as well. 
Yeah, that's a good question. I think our, our last gubernatorial candidate, uh, the Republican candidate, uh, Mark Ronchetti, was absolutely atrocious. That guy was a horrible candidate. And, and we need to do a better job vetting the people that we put up on that, on that platform to run against these, these uh, horrible uh, Democrats. And there's good Democrats out there, but the ones that, you know, Michelle Grisham specifically was horrible. He, he had no business running for office. He never was involved with the Republican Party at a grassroots level. We were never able to vet him out as character personally. He's not from here. I don't so think. how did he win? Because I wasn't here at that point when, when he got That's elected. a very good question because Jay Block, if you guys followed the, the local news, I mean, Jay, Jay Block won the pre-primary convention, and I was a big fan of Jay. I'm still friends with Jay now. He's an awesome dude, Air Force veteran. He's not from here, but I hung out with the guy long enough. I know his policies. I trusted his judgment. He was involved with the Republican Party. He was actually his county commissioner. So he, he did enough for me to trust him. And I think in the future, if we're going to have people run for these gubernatorial positions, these, these hardcore positions like Congress or U.S. Senate, I mean, look at Yvette Harrell, for instance. She started out as a state representative, and her dad built freaking Cloudcroft, for crying out loud. That's someone we want in a high power position like that. Look at Ben Lunar running for U.S. Senate right now, Start Republican Party county chair for, 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 for Alamogordo, you know, big time grassroots guy. Get that guy in the U.S. Senate. So if you're going to do lieutenant governor or governor, Start out the grassroots. We don't need these random dudes jumping in there at the last minute thinking they can take over. And, and just, you don't have the support. And, and you haven't embedded in yet. So I think in the future, the best thing for everybody to do is get involved on the grassroots level for, for many reasons so you can help the cause. We're just barely missing the vote by a few people, like a couple hundred votes on almost every election. And you can argue stolen or not, but there's conservatives winning all but over the I'm country. I'm encouraged by that. You know what? I'm encouraged. There's, it's closer. There's conservatives winning all over the country in even worse states than us as far as voter, voter integrity is concerned. But... but you're also going to be able to vet out other potential leaders in your community and in your state and see, like, this is the person I do want in that powerful position. I just didn't like how he came out of nowhere, and I just don't like the guy. I don't like Mark Ronchetti, and he knows that. <laughs> I'll debate him any day of the week if you want to debate. I'll okay. debate you on any subject. Let me ask you this. How do you really feel about Mark Ronchetti? I don't like him. No, sir. I don't like him. If anybody watched no, Ren sir. and Stimpy I don't growing, like him. I, it's exactly you remember that? I love that. Yeah. Like, no, sir. I don't the like horse. Him. we got to get a sound bite of the horse. No, sir. I don't like him. So awesome. I mean, just because he just doesn't stand up for the people, he didn't run a good campaign whatsoever, and we and we just gave the election to Michelle Grisham. We just gave it to her on a silver platter, you know. And the horrible policies we're about to go through the worst ever in American history, the most important election in American history, mm -hmm. and we got one of the worst governors in the country at at our well, stead. And it's ridiculous. One more mention about that too. Now I still voted for Ankeny because out of all the choices, I did too. he was still the best choice. Okay, yeah. he may not have been a wonderful, perfect choice. But the other factor that stole a few points, probably didn't make a difference whether he would have won or not, was uh, Bedoni, who ran as the independent, I think. Phony Bedoni. Well, and, and I don't know too much about. But evidently, was she a Republican first before a Libertarian? Yeah, she was hardcore Republican first, yeah. Okay. And, and when you do stuff like that, okay, well, I get it. You get pissed off. But she had to have <laughs> known there was no way she could win. There was no way she could win. And all that she probably did, and people that voted, unfortunately, was take votes away from a more conservative candidate. So when you vote also, you have to be thinking about that as well. You know, because that could be a, another scenario again. I don't know any libertarians that are running for um, things yeah, right and now. I don't follow the party. I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt no, you. No, I was done. Yeah, that, uh, I think this is a great, great conversation so early on um, before the next gubernatorial election because ultimately what this to me boils down to is leadership within the Republican Party. The leadership of the Republican Party should have been the one vetting out these people, whether it was Karen Bedoni, which I do have some respect for. She's a fighter, she's charismatic, and she, she does know how to garner a crowd, which you got to respect that to a certain level. I, I, I think I, her thinking was pretty good on yeah, those things. Yeah, she, she had some solid points and some solid ideals. And we, me and her personally had some disagreements, but overall I did respect for her. I respect her for her ability to get support and to get a message out there. That's hard to do. She mm -hmm. did it. And then the Republican leadership failed at getting her involved in a positive way, which is why she got turned off and working on the Republican Party, and she went rogue. Leadership, Republican Party leadership. And then the Republican Party leadership allowed Mark Ronchetti to, to trump, with, for lack of a better term, uh, uh, Jay Block in the pre-primary convention or, the, uh, or in the primary. The leadership should have done a better job vetting out the gubernatorial candidates. I think that's a huge uh, failure on the leadership of the Republican Party. And I have to ask you this because I can't answer this question. Let's say that Bedoni would have gotten in there instead of Ronchetti. Do you think there would have been a possibility that we could have still beat MLG? Well, yeah, and I know she, that's you know that's in the past. It's already, a tough but. one because she is dark and she is native. But at the end of the day, that kind of a and which people vote for. People, yeah. I'm, I'm saying it's a good. This thing. is New Mexico. Yeah, it's a good thing. People identify with that. You know, people vote for who they identify with. And I think she could have got a lot of votes that way. But now that I know what I know about politics, your name, your name brand awareness has to be 
huge and you got to be able to bring some money in because you're going up against people who can raise millions of dollars and those millions of dollars go right into social media campaigns they go right into walkers and unless you can get you know fight that battle i don't care how cool you are or how good of a platform you got you're going to lose that battle all day you need money to pay people to walk for you to support you you need money to put your name out there Boy, ain't that the truth, absolutely. But I, I am glad, like you say, we are talking about this now. And I just, I hope we have some better candidates. And it's never too early to start. Like, I want, I want to tell you, if you're out there and you're thinking at all about running for an office, I don't think it's really ever kind of too early. Start making relationships, start getting active in your party, in the Republican Party, participate listen to our show please you know come and be a guest maybe you have a good idea yeah you. And, and i'm consulting a candidate right now in albuquerque i won't i won't say her name quite yet because i haven't asked her permission but she's excited and she's got a huge she's got a great chance at winning and she's starting early now she's getting involved now she's starting to raise money now she's asking me really good questions i can help a lot if you guys want to get a social media platform going i can help with that you want to just get a messaging platform going i can help with that there's a lot of resources out there and honestly guys running for office is the most fulfilling thing i've ever done I highly recommend it if you're in that position to do so. Now, not a lot of people have the time or the resources to run for office. I understand that. But if you do, you know you do. You know who I'm talking about. You know who you are. Get your ass in the fight. We need your help. And it is. You know, I've been there, done that. I've served on the Maricopa uh, Healthcare District from 2008 to 2012. And we always say, run for office. Or if you can't run for office, you know, help somebody. I had a wonderful team, and that's why we won. And it was a great four years. I couldn't do another four years, but I, w I wished I could have. But you learn so much. You really do. And you will not be disappointed because it's, it's like getting a degree in politics. I don't know. No, yeah, well, And what we're basically trying to do here is normalize getting involved in politics. We're trying to normalize it. For too long, we've been discouraged. Right. We've, been, we've been conditioned to not care about it, to think someone's going to take over and take, and take care of us. Like, no, guys, it's we the people. You getting involved in politics in some form or fashion is your modern day expression of we the people. It's 1776 all over again, a la Alex Jones. And this is it. It's the biggest election in world history coming up right now and things are getting intense. So why not get involved? Why not mix ideas and collaborate with like-minded people? It feels freaking great. I, right now, I, I'm, I'm gonna brag about myself a little bit. My circle is incredible. I have the most incredible friends and circle I've ever had in my life. And I owe that all to running for office and getting involved with politics. My friend, my circle is incredible right now. I know it is, absolutely, <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure it is, yeah, absolutely. It's the truth. I'm not trying to, I'm just being real. That's, that's the kind of quality and caliber of people that you meet when you get involved in politics. These are people who truly care about their country, they can care about their rights, they care about their state, and they care about their families. And those are the kind of people I want to hang out with. And when you say we the people, and unfortunately a lot of people are thinking, oh, we the people, it's those militia and crazy people. No, we the people means, you know what, we are the bosses. And we can blame all the politicians and all the leadership, but ultimately it's on us mm -hmm. because we're supposed to be the bosses and we're supposed to be self-governing and don't elect those people and election integrity so many things i mean There's every week you There's hear us talking about a lot of the same issues because they're they're worth repeating they really are okay i think we're down to what like our last oh my goodness We've got about 12 minutes left okay well, we got some other local news um, too no yeah we should we should really Remind people, yeah, okay, if you live in the Las Cruces area, Tuesday is Las Cruces City Council time, so go to the meeting in the afternoon. Shout out to Coalition of Conservatives in Action. Uh, they're back to their regular meetings, Thursday, 6 p.m. at the Kitchen Craft. It's right. on Telshore, right next to Rudy's Barbecue. We always have some great guests. Juan Garcia is the leader there. By the way, uh, shout out to, to Juan Garcia and Sarah Smith. They're doing like a podcast where they keep people up to date. You know, they're the ones that are also fighting the Las Cruces uh, public schools um, about inappropriate books, I'll say that. And then, real quick too, I just wanna, what Henry, we talked to our Republican County Chairman, Henry Young, last week. And next week, we're gonna be having our pre-primary ward caucuses. <sighs> that's, that's a mouthful to say. Okay, and I think um, ours are going to meet. We're not going to have ours together, but no. like they have them on different days, the two wards. If you're from Arizona, wards are kind of like the districts out here, and they're going to meet on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. All of them are going to meet at 6 o'clock, so you can go and find information on the website. And that's going to be at the Las Cruces Gospel Rescue Mission, which is 1050 West Amador here in Las Cruces. And then 2024 Pre-Primary County Convention is gonna be held January 27th at 8 a.m., nice and early, 
and that's at the Cineport 10 Theater, 700 South Telshire. And then real quick, the purpose of these caucuses is to elect delegates to the county convention that will elect delegates to the pre-primary Republican state convention. Now, I haven't gone through this process. I'm Miss Arizona, so this is going to be a total learning thing for me, so I'm going to be looking to you and other people for guidance to show no. me the way. And, and it's cool, and I'll just say this, guys, so like w me and Alice here, are, we're bringing to the table the dynamic of her being the gen baby boomer generation, baby boomer, on the millennials, and when you guys do get in politics, and if you guys are around my age, you're in my generation, you're going to see that they're the ones running the show. The baby boomers are the ones who donate all the money, who have the time to do all the volunteer work for the Republican Party. They're the ones who are running the show. They're the ones who are in office, so... That's something that we have to acknowledge, and this is this is a show to appease to them because they deserve it. They're the ones doing the hard work, and then it's also to get our new generation involved so that way we can take the reins over uh, in a more comfortable fashion rather than just crash courses. And right now it's crash course, guys. I'm the youngest guy around very often. <laughs> I mean, like 90% of the time I'm the youngest guy in the room, which to me I feel freaking, I feel freaking old if I do it. You know what I mean? Uh, but, but we got to fix that. we got to get more young people involved. we got to get more involved as millennials because... It's going to be our turn here soon, and you know, with Vivek running for office, that gives me a lot of hope. That because I, I love his ideas, and I love his energy. He's doing all the right things, and I think he represents the millennials in a very good way. And you know, that's a really good point because it is very powerful just for him to be out there on stage, Vivek. Oh, a quick shout out also to Preston Romero. Preston Romero uh, used to help us out at the show in Arizona. He now is running for office in California. He lives in the Sacramento area, and he's running for the state legislature. So if you want to follow him on Facebook or something, he's a millennial. Also, like, actually, he's 33. Is that a millennial? Or yeah, is that millennial. Still? still millennial, okay. yeah. Great candidate. Maybe we can have him on for a few minutes. Oh, we also need to talk about, real quick, uh, tomorrow we're going to be, I believe it's a live broadcast, but we'll be on the Chips and Salsa Show Arizona. Now, depending on when you see this, it might be actually this afternoon. It'll be on Tuesday, which will be the 17th, okay? And we will be on with Don Jorge in Arizona. And it's going to be like a reunion show of sorts with the original Chipsters. Me, Don Jorge, Martin Gonzalez is hopefully going to be on. You're going to be our new guy, millennial. But this is we're starting our 10-year anniversary of doing this show. And it's very powerful because our whole gist is Latinos are also conservatives. And we're trying to get people engaged in politics. So we're going to have so much fun. We're going to do it. I think we're going to zoom in. And I, I just want to encourage you. And if you if you miss it, please go and find us again on, on YouTube or Run, Rumble. And uh, tell your friends about it. It's going to be a powerful show. It's yeah, fun. subscribe to the YouTube. We'll be bumping that a lot more. I'm going to be doing, uh, doing short clips on the Instagram. You know, share us on Instagram. Uh, we're going to be blowing it up all over all these platforms. So we appreciate all you guys' support. Flavors of the Desert, boom, hit them up as well. That's gonna be, we'll be doing, I'll be doing some more content with them as well on that. Oregon Mountain Studios, you guys are badass. Thank you so much for having us. Hey, we just got a few more minutes and I wanted to say, do you want to say a few things about Epstein? Real quick? Mr. Epstein, what was it about? Oh, well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> so David Copperfield <laughs> has just come out and he was he was aboard the Epstein plane and on the island. And with the funny, the running joke is with Tim Dillon, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of Tim Dillon, was that basically, <laughs> the only one that's going to get any trouble is David Copperfield. Nothing's going to happen to Bill Clinton. Nothing's going to happen to any of these other people. It's just going to be all on freaking David Copperfield. And that's just how they operate. You know, they, they always uh, throw the guy with the least amount of power under the bus. It's but too bad he can't make himself disappear. I had to use that old joke. I had to say it. Sorry. Didn't he make a train disappear back in the day? He was, I used to love to watch that guy. Mm. I love magic. Well, he's good. well he likes Epstein. Oh, it's going to be, you know. So our former governor. Still in the news. Oh, is that right? Two of our former governors. Okay, former governor King. King sold the land. Oh, to, oh you did mention that earlier. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I sold the land. To Do you think there's any MLG? Connection? MLG. The only thing I know is that she had postings of satanic temple on her Twitter. That's about really? as deep as I know as she goes on that side. You know, every she time gay guys dicks every once in a while. Every time I just even read about her, it's something very anti-Catholic about her. As a Catholic, I can say that, okay? And and it really bothers me. I mean, I really want to pray for her because yeah, pray she for needs her. praying. It's a good way to say she it. needs prayer. She Absolutely. Needs prayer. Absolutely. What did we not touch on in our last few minutes? Because I do I do want you to close it out with one of your fabulous prayers. Well the prayers are quick. You know, I don't know, there's not that's pretty much the gist of everything, guys. The Epstein Island is kind of a distraction, to be honest with you. The, the, the board.
border and the illegal immigration that's that's you know ransacking our treasury that's going to be destroying our country in the near future is more important i think that we should be focusing on epstein about 20 percent, 10 percent of the time and we really need to be talking about how we're going to handle this huge influx of millions and millions of people that are going to be voting against the we the people's desires here in the very near future so for us i like talking about epstein because i think it's hilarious because they buried it for so long like Ghislaine Maxwell, what were we talking about earlier? Ghislaine, oh. Ghislaine Maxwell. And yeah, you were telling me something very interesting. Well, she, she has a submarine license. Yeah. She's a submarine pilot. And, and then, so that's Ghislaine cool. Maxwell and her father were really close to Mother Teresa, and that's a provable fact. There's a lot of pictures of her with uh, Ghislaine Maxwell's father. So, And if you, if you know people talk to people, I've done a deep dive on this. People who knew Mother Teresa, she was a bitter old lady. She was mean as hell. Why would she be hanging out with Ghislaine Maxwell's dad? You know, we just got to start wrapping our head around There's how just so much information evil there is in this world. Your head will explode. Right? And until we realize the true nature of the evil of humanity, we're not going to be able to fight against it. Because everybody wants to project their goodness onto the world and think everybody's goody two shoes and they want to go to work and nine to five and they want to take care of the kids. No, there's people out there that are trying to kill your ass. All right. And we need to wake up to that if we're going to stop it. Unfortunately, yeah, that's a that's a that's a really it's always been the case. Look at the Bible. I mean, the well, Pharaoh, the, the Pharaoh ordered the firstborn child dead. That's what started this whole thing. It's it's always been it's it's always been a violent, very human world, mm -hmm. and it's no different now. It's just nope. now it's you can see it immediately. It's instantaneous on social media or TV or whatever your your communication. Selling kids for sex trafficking. That's just normalized now. We joke about it and laugh about it, but it's been going on for a long time, and it's really not a joking matter. I mean, it's fucked up. And excuse my language, but I think it warrants that kind of language because we've allowed it to happen for so long. And yeah, we can focus on it a little bit, but it, again, it just I hate to reiterate, but it just goes back to realizing how evil the world can be, and we need to wake up to the fact that that is the case. By the way, I believe, isn't it on Amazon Prime that you can see The Sound of Freedom now, free? Oh, really? I didn't know that. I, I believe it's Amazon. Uh, I hope I'm not wrong, but I think, yeah, so, somebody posted it. or Damn good movie, it. by the way. Please, if you haven't seen that movie... You Who hasn't seen it? Come on. A lot of people haven't. Ask, the, ask everybody. Do you ask everybody? It's amazing. Like, oh, no, I haven't seen it yet. Um, wow. Even if you have seen it, I want to see it again. There's so much information. The people that I know that haven't seen it, they purposely avoid it. They're like, I know how horrible it is. I don't want to look at it. Okay. No, but they, they it. and then I get it. on that point though, I was afraid to go see because I, I don't know if I want to go and watch a movie like that with that subject, that topic. They do it in the realm of like old fashioned movies. Where they don't have to show you the horror. Great cinematography. They just do it so well that you already, with your imagination, and you know where the movie's going, it's super powerful. It's so well done. And the acting is just, it's superb. And shout out to, shout out to Sound of Freedom beating Taylor Swift on the box office hits, too. They, they, they <laughs> dominated Taylor Swift on that one. Absolutely. And she, and she was, she was uh, caught hanging out with Epstein as well. I don't get the, what's so hot about Taylor Swift, but, you know, I'm the old boomer here. She's like the American pie, blonde-haired, blue-eyed gal, you know? That's kind of her edge. That's the way I see it. And maybe she's great. Do you love her? No. Okay. I like her as much as I like MLG. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Right up like there, her. huh? I don't okay. Like her. No. All right up there. And and Mark Ronchetti. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Do not call this man for references, right? <laughs> On no. them. No, yeah. It's, it wouldn't it's, happen. It is what it is. I mean, people don't like me either. I hear about it all the time. <laughs> well, I like Whatever. you, Zeke, and I love doing this oh, show, the Chips and Salsa Show, New Mexico with you. And I'm so glad that we're doing it from these wonderful Oregon Mountain Production Studios. We're getting a lot of good comments. Thank you very much. Keep the comments coming in and your suggestions. I appreciate it. And uh, I, I want to let you close it out with a prayer, Zeke. Okay, we'll do. Lord, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to shoot it straight to the people, to give us the strength to fight for humanity, to fight for our state, to fight for our local community. And I pray that you continue to give us energy to do so and to bring people together for you, Lord. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. And happy Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It's already going to be passed, but consider the whole week for freedom. I heard he was a communist today. What's up with that? You ever hear about that? Wow. No. You ever hear about that? There's like a picture no. of him in a communist school. But I have a friend who knows so much about them. Someday we'll have to do a MLK. show about him. Absolutely. Yeah, I like him. As it is Absolutely. right now, I like the guy. Did a lot. He did a lot for He was a bit of a people. philanderer, but if you got that much power, that's Well, there common. you go again. It's always, we're always talking about that, huh? He's probably a pussy grabber, huh? <laughs> oh, well. Well, God uses people for what he needs to. For what he needs <laughs> Not for to. that. Not for that, no. You didn't listen well, to I what I said. I, I didn't say that. I know what you're saying. <laughs> he uses it for what he needs to.
Yeah, I, 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 as it is right now, I like it. You know, we're, we judge people off of the contents of their character, not the, the color of their skin. I mean, that, that's just a huge inspiration. That's based off the Constitution as well. We're all created equal, and we all uh, have right to life, liberty, and happiness. That's basically what MLK is saying. Hum, human beings, human freedom is go. based on, on our spirit and our connection to God, not on our color of our skin. Absolutely. Well, thank you, sir, and we will see you, Chipsters. Thank you for tuning in. We appreciate you following us. And we'll see you next week for the Chips and Salsa Show in New Mexico. Alice Lara. Zeke Rodriguez. Giving you spirit fingers on the way out. <laughs> Hasta. Guacan. Later, guys.